In this example, I've created a couple of variables, x and y. x equals 10 and y equals 2. Now, using a logical operator and, we're going to test the values of x and y and determine whether or not the expression of, as a whole is true or false. So the question, x is equal to 10 and y is equal to 2, if both of those are true, if x is equal to 10 and y is equal to 2, then we're going to go ahead and do a right line to the console of true. Otherwise, we'll do a right line of false. As you would expect, at this point, both of those should be true, so the entire expression will evaluate to true, as we see here in the results. What would happen, however, if I were to change one of these variable values? Let's change x to a value of 11. Well, in this case, the expression evaluates to false, because both of the sides of that expression are no longer true. Let's change the operator. Let's change that from an ampersand to a vertical bar. In other words, an or. x is equal to 10, or y is equal to 2. Now the result is true, because one or the other of those statements is true. Let's go back and change x to 10 again. But this time, we're going to put in the caret or the XOR operator. Now remember, with the XOR, this is an exclusive OR operator. So I'm basically saying one or the other of these two statements is true, but not both. In this example, both 10, at y, x is equal to 10 and y is equal to 2. So they're both true. The result, therefore, false. The entire expression is false because only one or the other of those statements can be true in order for the entire expression to evaluate to true. Now I also put in here a little reference to a, a mod division operator just so we can see this work as well. What I did is use the uh, 10 mod 3. So a 10 divided by 3, what is the remainder? As we know, 10 divided by 3 is 3 but has a remainder of 1. So as we execute this code, we should get a value of 1 here, and we do, in our output. If this all looks very familiar, that's great, because most of the uh, operators that we see in C-sharp should be really familiar based on the things that we've already done. If some of this is new to you, you may want to go back and review the chart of the different operators again, just to be comfortable with basically what they're going to do. Take the time to do that before we go on, because a lot of our later operations are going to depend on an understanding of these operators.